She holds, it's feeling like we've been here before We're both so broke That something it'll keep us afloat Don't work too slow We can't keep falling deeper again Came too close in the day so far from pure A rush of blood but we search for so much Find the guy panting the bomb. Hold the waves it into a second. 1v3 looking for the fight, looking for the last two. He's gonna find one though. He gets it with us. Absolutely a must make because of the, the and ease of easy them. What? The rest of his team is slowly collapsing. The Sombra is the last one. Oh, and then Blue Dice with the clutch. Yella gonna get the Nair, starting up the Nair train. Boy cannot get out of it. What are we gonna see? The forward air, then down air. Taking some form of space outside the spawn door, but Dragon Blade is going to look to take it right back with a huge shatter. Oh my god! Another pick! 
Another pick! Oh, he just keeps going! He's a big bang! Hard point in the hand of the other team. Toxic trying to find one. Finds a second! Does he get the 30 shots? Finishes off with the pistol! The entire team in front of him, and he's gonna find four! The ace, actually! Push on the corner, and Jinji staying deep instead of going to fetch like usual. The week of esports has only begun here for Shenandoah University as we finished up our day one with our Monday Valor. We've now moved on to Tuesday where, yes, we are going to have two of our esports teams playing in their NACE LCQ last chance qualifier matches where it is now a single elimination broadcast. And, yep. you know, Ben, both of you, we've been in these situations in the last semester. Both our Super Smash Bros. teams and Overwatch fighting for their tournament lives. Yeah, it, both teams, right, are coming in to tonight with a lot to earn here. Smash Bros, right, in the la uh, LCQ, as well as Overwatch here, hoping to stay alive uh, in the season. But, yeah, there's a lot going on on the Overwatch side, yeah. right? Because Malga was really good, and now he's not good. <laughs> teams practice Malga, and now you can't really play Malga. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens if we just resort back to what we are used to seeing uh, that we have seen all semester long. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that lore a little bit more as well, just because we're, we've talked about uh, this team, the Hornets, that they've mm -hmm. had a very rough season, right? It's putting yeah. out there. They've unable to secure a win being in that NACE Super League. Again, invitational only. There is literally no higher tier of competition yeah. for them to go. So the fact that they're here in the first place is pretty dang incredible. Yeah. But at the same time, you're playing against some of the best talent in the entire country. And that is within Collegiate. Like a lot of these teams have at least one or even full teams of former professional players. And, you know, the fact that they're staying in high spirits, they're hyped up. They know <laughs> that the pressure in this game, particularly, yes. It is going to be high, yet they're able to keep the smiles on their face. I mean, Shay has a long vocal Kirby. That, oh, that's so cute. I hope she goes into that again. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to see because we know with these players, right, a lot of them, this could possibly be their last run here on the Overwatch squad. We look at Sacred End. We look at uh, King Kong Poppy as well as Voidex here being kind of seniors and possible uh exiting like members right of this yeah. squad right so it'll be interesting to see kind of what goes on if they're going to really put everything out on the field which i would assume mm -hmm. that they are going to do of course trying to keep their Absolutely. playoff hopes alive here and stuff like that so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see kind of what goes on very excited to see uh them go up against texas a&m here uh yeah it's gonna be fun yeah, and we're hey, we're looking to have fun here on the desk, regardless of what that result is going to be. On paper, these two teams relatively even, but with Texas A and M's, I tell you, you know, a rather unknown factor, and it's very difficult to grade that, especially with again, very unlucky with when these matches be played hours after new patches are put into yep. the game, yep. and of course, one of the main things that we turn to are these maps to kind of help guide us in the meta control. Of course, being that first point, you're expecting to have Li Zhang Tower go out. Looking at where Shenandoah, as well as the majority of the competitive Overwatch community like to go mm -hmm. in times where you're moving between one meta to the other, there was a big patch and you don't really know what's good. Mm -hmm. Many people default back to this Ramatra composition. It's yeah. very easy to balance as a group. You're able to have this push and pull sort of sense and it's the best composition that Shenandoah have been keeping in their back pocket. Yeah, this is something that they have played throughout this semester and are comfortable on. We know uh, Ben on that tank role, his main role. He was DPS last semester, playing a lot of Genji, a lot of Mei for the squad when Dragonblade X was uh, on the team last semester. Um, but yeah, so it, it's kind of the tried and true, right? The Ramatra comp, like you said, is something that we mm -hmm. will often see from these teams. But we start off on Lijong Tower, right? Yes. Something that everyone is very comfortable on. 
across the board, pretty much, for Control to start. I hope they gave us the Reinhardt and the Teleporter. Oh, nice. Symmetra got buffed. May got buffed. I yeah. mean, the, the, the main Season 9 patch touched over half of the Overwatch roster. Mm -hmm. And the ones to receive some of the biggest changes was May and the Symmetra. Yeah. And even Reinhardt is going to have increased damage towards his Fire Strike. So, I mean, Shenandoah. I want to see it at least one map. Maybe right. not the whole series this time, but at least one map. And, right. you know, it, it's where they put all of their eggs into for so mm -hmm. long. And uh, there's not many teams that are willing to pull it out these days in Overwatch. Yeah. Reinhardt is in a very sad place. He's kind of left in the, in the Overwatch dungeon. Every once in a while, someone <laughs> will pull him out. It's like, hey, let's have some fun. Right. He kind of gets beaten down to a pulp, and then you put him back in his dungeon. Like, it's just... It's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah, and with this SU squad, we know that they are very good oh, at yeah. playing Ryan Hart. They make Ryan Hart actually with, fun. They make it very fun. <laughs> very fun to play and very fun to watch, Absolutely. right? Because they're very aggressive on this TP kind of style. Um, like you said, there were buffs over to me onto uh, Sumatra. So, uh, uh, Sumatra. Symmetra. There, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Sumatra. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see if they bring that out. That would be really fun to see if they do do that in this yeah. LCQ, right? Just to have some fun to start, but then kind of lock in back onto that kind of Ramatra style comp that we are mm -hmm. expecting to see uh, from both sides today. Yeah. And there's so many things that are currently on the table. Ramatra, yes, a strong point. Orissa is up there in terms of her tankiness in the front line. It was kind of the backup option to the Malga, but mm -hmm. even then, even Ramatra got buffed. He was meta prior to yeah. all of this little Malga shenanigans popping out of nowhere, and uh, even him getting some of these bigger changes for the better. I mean, that's quite interesting to see, and it's, it's almost like the Overwatch developers wanted Ramacha to make a return. I mean, personally, yep. these comps, they seem to move very slow. They mm -hmm. can get kind of boring, and that's why you want to add this different, this different flavor to it, this different mix, and throw in the Reinhardt, the Junker Queen, even mm -hmm. the Tracer. And I don't... This map will be different than the rest. I do want to port that out there. Right. Some heroes are going to be pulled out that you're not going to see anywhere else, such as that Symmetra May. Like mm -hmm. Tracer Sojourn, those are Sacred End and Voidex best heroes respectively. Yep. And that's what we're fully looking into as they're going to roll out of the gates here momentarily on Night Market. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see kind of what does go on with these picks on this DPSI because we know the Symmetra and... Uh, the May are something that both players are comfortable on. We will see uh, the Symmetra come out on Sacred End, but Voidex is going to be piloting the Sojin possibly yep. here for SU. So one of the huge comfort picks that these two have is that Sojin. One of them will be piloting it to start and the TP already coming through to get things kicked off. Yeah, so actually it's not the Symmetra May. It will just be going to the Tracer Sojourn. It appears, damn you, just going to go for the Symmetra, get themselves set up on that objective. Relatively the same. The only difference, of course, yes, that's Symmetra. And the Baptiste instead of the Moira. His sacred end, meeting an unfortunate end. That's the very start of this beginning. We loop, that's two heads now rolling for the Hornets. Loop, who a menace in fight number one. Yeah, Loop already picking up those two early kills there. One onto Ben, onto Sacred End as well with that charged up super shot there uh, from that Sojin. So, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what we expected, right? Coming in, trying to find out where we want to really take this comp. Swapping back now over to this May is Sacred End, mm -hmm. opting to not go for this Tracer, not go for this mobility, and instead go for this long range kind of poke and this interrupt with the wall. Yeah. It's more of a guess and check, right? You have absolutely no idea what Tammy was going to run out with now that you've seen it. Now you can adjust for yourself, and that is a big pick. Just is now down, and there's no way for any of these turrets to be put back up. The May wall trapping Wanter into place. They're going to manage to stay on their feet for a little bit longer. Goliath and pumping the heels into their Omatra. As soon as that block goes down, though, it's the floodgates opening. Shenandoah now gaining that first capture, sending Tammy away. Yeah, a huge first pick there onto just like you said. That's Symmetra going down, opens the door for that wall to come up, trapping Wunter there, staying alive for one heck of a long time oh, yeah. with those heals coming in uh, from the supports there. But yeah, they were able to interrupt, disrupt, get that early kill, and then really separate the team from each other to really retake this point. Mm -hmm. And especially when you look into this next fight, I mean, you have plenty of ultimates to go. Yes, on either side. Big thing here, Cherry's Coalescence. As soon as this Photon Barrier comes out from Just, the entire point will be split in half. But they're going to just teleport straight on through. Amplification Matrix and the Photon Barrier. Damn you, dumping everything on the board. Cherry's Coalescence working absolute overtime. It's King Kong Poppy in the kill feed. Voidex to follow it up with a shot of his own. Shenandoah took the surprise attack like champs. Like, hey, this is nothing new for us. We invented this play, Tam Mew. If they want to win, they're going to have to try something else. 
And a good response there. Tammy, like you said, went all in on that play with Ultimus being defended practically across the board. But Cherry there just went crazy, doing so much damage, doing so much healing uh, for the SU squad. You're keeping everybody alive. No one falling on the side of SU in that entire state. Have this all for ultimate, and you're using the coalescence solely to win a fight. I mean, that ultimate is basically a long cooldown. Shenandoah yeah. has all of the tools they could possibly work with right now, and then you're looking ahead towards the next battle. Yes, Voidex is going to hit the deck first. King Kong Poppy's ultimate just a little bit too late to keep him on his feet. Shenandoah, though, the blizzard from Sacred End was perfectly placed. It put Tamu straight back in winter. Quite not, not quite familiar with that one. Being down in Texas, and now they're down even further for one fight territory. Yeah, Voidex also still has uh, the ultimate up and available when this next fight kicks off, but Shenandoah doing a good job at denying entry to this site. Very good at keeping them apart. We already see CC going down. SU going crazy wow. here in map one. Especially King Kong Poppy, he is having the time of his life on the Lucio. Tamu, try as they might, and okay, they certainly are just bringing them back from the brink. Maybe a slight sign of hope, yet who else is the error to follow up? No red bodies on the point. Ben sure as heck knows it. It'll be Shenandoah closing out Night Market. Great start to Lijon Tower. Yeah, the, I love seeing the swap right back over to that May because that yep. really separated uh, Tamu, and they weren't really able to do a whole lot in entering the site, right? They had so much peel, so much tankiness and uh, self-peel potential with this May that they were able to stay alive, and Tamu weren't able to pick up these kills, whoas Shannon Shenandoah were able to just roll with oh. their ultimates and with the As abilities that they have, today. just with these characters, yep. able to just you force Tamu you back and deny entry altogether to that site. Your and Shenandoah's proactiveness, their strange. ability to identify where Tamu were playing and how to counter, it worked absolutely wonderfully. Now, assuming Tamu stick with what they're pulling out, okay, yeah, so they're running the Malga. Malga, notoriously, is Ramatra's biggest counter. He is essentially useless when it comes to that. I mean, you're set on fire, doing crit damage through and through, but on he's that! Voidex is taking all of the supports out before Tamu can even poke their head through the door! Oh, Voidex wow. getting insane. Finding two off of the bat, the aggression coming through from SU, the point not yet unlocked, but nothing that Tamu can do to really come back. Now we'll see the swaps back onto this Ramatra. Yep. The Malga not going to stick around for long in this one. First point access and the cap going in favor of SU now. Trying to pull back Justin Loop, both very, very low. Voidix hunting, trying to find these headshots. Wow. Unable to get a kill just yet in that exchange, but good damage coming out across the board. Voidex, a major threat for Tamu right now. The biggest part, though, you get this Lucio out of the fight. Now, Ben can't rotate the way that you would typically like to do so. The recall gone as well, Sacred End. Needing to play a lot more passive, but with the Hornets still in control of this objective, they're okay to kind of just stick around. They'll die on the objective, Wanter. Uh, turning the entire field back over to Tamu for the time being, but not a bad fight for them to lose. Yeah, SD Voidex, now. hold up. Voidex, yeah, finding a few kills there off the back end of that fight. Now looking to regroup Sacred and still getting some poke chip damage, just being the pest that Tracer can be in the back of these fights. Pulse Bomb still available, like you said, will land. Won't find the kill just yet, but Sacred and and King Kong Poppy still laying down damage for SU. That was the speed amp forwards off of the damage that Oidex has been able to provide. I mean, he's having the game of his life right now. I mean, throughout the season, we know what this guy's capable of, but this is really the first time that he's been able to come alive. Damn, you were giving him so much space to work, and this is a problem that you need to be taken care of. Yeah, Voidex is really just playing lights out Overwatch right now, not getting picked off by himself, and the aim is just completely wow. on point. We see the beat now coming through from Tim, he's trying to stay alive, but answered back. Ults being used across the board, yep. no one going down Ooh. just yet. Trades now coming through, Watcher dropping Voidex as well, finally going down. A huge DPS okay. member on the side of SU now opting to retreat with their fallen soldier. Yeah, but with Wanter going down, there was no way for Tamu to continue their push there as badly as they wanted Voidax off the field. I mean, think about how much they had to commit just to even touch the Sojourn right now. They know that Voidax is the issue, but haven't been able to find a proper response, and they're going to have to think even harder momentarily. Luke, though, will be the one who pulled the trigger at the overclock. Voidax, yes, will have one to answer, yet being down three of their team members, you're best off holding that for your next battle. Yeah, holding on to this ability, Voidax, 
opting to fall back. The overclock coming through from Luke. They're able to find two huge, crucial kills on the side of SU now. Just regrouping, waiting for respawns to come in. Not too bad to lose that point here. You're already at 86%. One more cap and a good hold will be Ooh. the thing to seal the deal. Sacred okay. able to find the trade, however, onto Luke will fall this on his own, now. but that's not too bad. No, and now you can just walk in with the overclock too. I mean, Sacred Animal will be back much faster. Especially if you can avoid it, sends some people to join Loop in the spawn room. That CC down, he's hard committing. It is back on the more. He has to get the tail, but no. Loop returning just in time to keep their Moira alive. All the meanwhile, Shenandoah, they're going to get control of this objective, knowing that Tamu, they're down and beaten, where Shenandoah Thrive is in these desperate battles where they don't have a numbers advantage. If they know how to work down a player or two, and it's going to come back to save them in the best ways, Control Center is going to hit 100%, and that's Shenandoah's second map win of the season. Yeah, and in commanding fashion as well, right? Because Tamu weren't able, again, to really enter that sight at all once that regroup came through from SU. They waited for this overclock. Voidex able to find two huge mm -hmm. picks with that ultimate coming through. And really, that's what swung the fight back into SU. So you see play of the game here. Ben able to pick up some crucial kills on the backside of that final fight there for point number one. Um, and yeah, the second map win for SU here. Yeah. And a fairly convincing one. A very convincing one, indeed, and a lot of that Voidex just was out of his mind, and yeah. I want to see that. I wonder if it's the, the fresh new haircut, you know, coming Maybe. back from spring break, yeah. and, and hey, it's like fashionable hair is no longer in his <laughs> eye. He's like, all right, guys, I got this. I can see, and it just kept taking people out one by one, and right. this is the kind of game that Shenandoah have been looking to have all season, is mm -hmm. this commanding presence. If Shenandoah are winning, it's not close. That's always yeah. how it has been. I mean, they are able to just put their opponents down into the dirt, but once they start getting some of that pushback mm -hmm. and this kind of push and pull sage is where they can find the most trouble they haven't been put there yet though they've been doing right. a great job particularly ben with finding the balance of taking space and kind of backing off and controlling that yep. because king kong poppy has been alive to help escort him in and out mm -hmm. and that's one thing i wanted to touch on right because no one was really getting picked out on the side of exactly. su which is what we often see sometimes from this squad someone will get a little overzealous a little too aggressive here we saw voidix go in but not a bad trade to really get that distraction going uh, in that last round there for map number one. But yeah, everyone is kind of grouped together, playing mm -hmm. together, right? Yep. They're not overextended. They're not trying to play by themselves. They're playing as a unit, following calls that King Kong Poppy and Sacred End are calling for uh, uh, across the board. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's very good to see this kind of cohesion uh, that we don't often sometimes see from this squad. Yeah. I mean, Shenandoah, unfortunately, when you play opponents that have, have simply ascended to the top levels of the game, again, most of the teams that they've played, actually, literally every single team but one they have played all season has had at least one professional player. Yeah. That is ridiculous to have to go up against. And having that experience, that knowledge, it can really be an asset to a team. And Shenandoah, as good as they are, sometimes getting that ball rolling initially is the big is the beginning of their downfall but now that they've had this incredible start to their series i mean yeah. this is where they're starting to dig deeper and like all right we've done it once we mm -hmm. can continue to do this again tam you you beat them in the mirror and now it's their turn to decide all right are we going to attempt to play this from monster to pull out the malga again mm -hmm. are you going to go with a doom fist dive i mean they're the ones that have to find that answer shadow for the first time like hey this worked and we're going to keep running it until they even give us a slightest reason to switch yeah and Right now, there is no reason to really switch. We're going to go really? over to Periso uh, huh. for the hybrid here. Interesting to see this coming through, but this is something where we might see an early kind of pick, Car. like this Widowmaker trying we to like Widow get Maker. a little pick here and there, get get in the heads of the opponent. Voidex very good at finding those headshots yeah. uh, off the rip uh, on this map. So interesting to see what gets brought out on this map. Yeah. And uh, the fact that this map is even here is quite crazy. Shenandoah yeah. will pick it, but they pick it for the reason that no one else wants to play it. So mm -hmm. Tam, you being the ones to pull this out, likely with the same reasoning. Yeah. Oh man, they're in for a <laughs> treat out here. Shenandoah, this is where they thrive. You put Ben on the Sigma, arguably one of his best heroes. You give Voidex either the Soldier and the Widowmaker. If they're going to be on the Tracer, and of course this double flex support. Mm -hmm. Cherry and King Kong Poppy can now play the rules. They're the most comfortable with. While Tam, you may think this is a weakness for Shenandoah, this is arguably one of their biggest strengths. 
Yeah, the two flex support players is something that's kind of nice to have, right? Because you will have that heal, but they're going to be doing a lot of damage Absolutely. in these fights, especially with the BAP on Cherry. Oftentimes, we see King Kong Poppy running the BAP here, very comfortable with that one, but it's going to be the Alari instead for King Kong Poppy here. And Ben going towards the Sigma comp, something that we often see them play on this Paradiso map here on mm -hmm. this hybrid push. So pretty comfortable picks coming across the board here for SU. Uh, this is the game they have been wanting to play. No Wittermaker, though, from Voidek, which is understandable on the defense, is a very hit-or-miss kind of character, quite literally. So right. the Sojourn much more consistent across the board. It's a safe pick, and obviously we know what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. If you even saw a glimpse of last map, unfortunately, Sacred End didn't think Just was capable of the same thing. It's actually Lupin just making a roll swap between who is playing that Sojourn and Tracer accordingly. Thankfully, Ben, though, be able to chuck some spears across the board, grab the counterpicking in the Tracer, so Shenandoah will have their reinforcements back sooner, and we'll see that of Tam Mew. Playing on the slow ground, though, is quite dangerous. Cherry can get back up there relatively easy, yet the support for players like Voidex is rather limited as this time goes. It's going to be a lot of this kind of poke, waiting for one of these Sojourns, ideally, to pop off and get a pick. Yeah, and Voidex here playing a little bit further back on this Sojourn, just trying to find these long-range poke opportunities with that charged up shot. Sacred and the one going behind enemy lines on this Tracer, something that we often see from this character, able to get oh, no out recall. very, very easily. Yeah, no recall, like you say, but able to escape loop with just a sliver of health. They're getting the heals back in their favor. Sacred end now, just kind of playing around that backside yeah. of Tamu, just trying to be a distraction. Not time you have the advantage, though, because they've been playing a more defensive game. Your Ant Matrix is up way sooner, so that threat of double damage, double healing, and even the Tree of Life put down on the objective. Overwhelming resources for Tam Yu, yet Ben hanging on for its Ear Thread. King Kong Poppy, yes, that is a heavy commit through. Full Solar Beam put it onto him, and it's enough to keep the tank on their feet and for Sacred End to find a pick of their own. Get Shen and Doa, they're currently down. Voidex sitting in 9 HP, soon hit, joining his teammates in the back of spawns on to Ben and King Kong Poppy to make the clutch up at the DPS line of Tam Yu are coming alive right now. Yeah, just unable to find those picks. Trades coming back and forth, but as soon as Cherry dropped in that fight, the healing just took a plummet, right? You mentioned that beam fully being invested into Ben there, trying to keep yeah. him alive, and then Cherry falling shortly after that mean, meant that there's not a lot of heals available on the side of SU. Tamu realized that the DPSs just went crazy onto the backside, yeah. onto SU, and really, there was no response that SU could really have in that situation. Tammy played exactly as they should, playing that slow game, building up those greater resources to overwhelm Shenandoah in the end. At this time, they were going to be the ones fighting into an app matrix. Interesting spot for Cherry to put it, but okay, if it works, it works. Never doubt this back tease player. She knows exactly what she is doing. Shenandoah have leaned so hard on her this entire season and showing exactly why she's on this roster. Yeah, Cherry coming in, able to pick up a few kills there on that backside onto that BAP as well. Like you said, a little interesting place for the window, but hey, they made it, it work works, to it perfection. Works. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining. It kills a kill, right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, good holds here coming through from SD, just trying to keep them out of harm's way, trying to stay alive, getting this kill onto Ben here. Sacred and Voidex overclock now popped, but will go down, oh. unfortunately, to the opposing soldier. Yeah, just was sitting and waiting for that moment to come alive, and that's a couple players lifted up to the sky, smashed back down into the ground. Vaunter holding on to that Gravitic Flux for a while, and it paid out in dividends. Tam Yu now able to get that payload on the roll, but it's already been moving so far, it's going to be knocking on Shenandoah's door shortly. Yeah, King Kong Poppy opting to just go for that reset, not try to stay alive too much longer, trying to get this fast uh, regroup here for the side of SU to be able to try to come up with a last uh, second hold there for this first point. 230 left sacred trying Ooh. to get someone, but just with the overcut, able to find two yet again. That's not what you want to see if you're on the side of SU. Yeah, Justin Loop switching their roles here. And yes, it's been working out so well for Tam Yu. Shenandoah has been starting these fights down a player, yet their ability to a clutch absolutely outshines what this Texas squad has been pulling out. And Shenandoah, I mean, you have the high ground in your control. Voidex can sit up here, and it just forces the rest of Tam you back. Yeah, Voidex taking this high ground, just trying to play for these backline picks, charging up 
that super shot and just trying to find these heads in the back line. Sacred and again <laughs> playing with fire. They're able to recall, able to get out in time to stay alive. Now Ult's getting popped. Of but King Kong fire. copy. This could be huge. Whew. There's three players lit up with their captive son, yet all of them will manage to stay alive. King Kong Poppy playing on the Iyardi, a DPS and a support hybrid, as many people have coined it, and using only the singular ultimate to win the battle, even better for the future of Shenandoah's economy. Yeah, we see the window is going to be up here in just a second on Cherry, something that could be coming out on this last hold here. We have a minute 20 left for this payload to reach this point. Sacred also has that pulse bomb available uh, on the side of SU. So if he's able to get on top of this Ash or on top of this Sojourn, that could be game changing on the side of SU. Look at the shots that King Kong Poppy has been able to put in. I mean, okay, as we watch in the back half, sure. Maybe not hitting nearly as many, but threat still very much present. And don't now take her down. That's a pulse bomb out through the back. And he's getting a loop. No reaction from either Azusa or an immortality field in time. It's pink under King Kong Poppy. Significantly more valuable. The longer that these fights go on, Shenandoah's health bars relatively low in comparison to Tam Mew. They're going to shove them in this back corner. Ben knows he's so close to this Gravitic Flux to be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and pull it out. There's so many abilities in the way, though. They have to work through an immortality field. And the Xuzu, if they're managing it, watch it low enough to focus fire from this team. They're firing on all cylinders. The communications are landing. And all they need to do is close out one more contest. I mean, you can see Voidix there just lasering down Wanter, now swapping over to this Winston, trying to get this touch. 15 seconds left here on this payload push for Tammy, but SU still having two ultimates up and available, two on the way here shortly. If this overtime touch goes long enough, two ultimates will be back up on the side Ooh. of SU. The overclock already coming out Beautiful. here from Voidix, able to find one already huge start for this last hold for SU. I mean, it's overtime time here. All they can do is stagger in, attempt to touch, but the early ultimates, the proactivity taken by the Hornets, they're not even gonna set another toe near the payload. It's going to stop midway through that second objective parody, so notoriously difficult in this particular area, the streets phase, due to the buildings you have to navigate across. They didn't have a significant way to contest that high ground, and Shenandoah played to their environment dang near perfectly and have set the bar well for themselves as they are now going to flip to the attack. Yeah, and props to Sacred in there on that second oh, to yeah. last fight, able to find that pick on two loop. That is something that I was looking to see there with that pulse bomb. Nailed it to uh, perfection, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Loop out of uh, commission there for the time <laughs> being and then that was the go button for uh, Shenandoah to really just put on the gas, put on the pressure, able to find these other ultimates uh, coming up off of cooldown in that later half of that last hold there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Shenandoah just playing patient, not getting too aggressive. Voidex being able to be patient with uh, the Sojourn, not going too aggressive, waiting on that high line, uh, the high ground, like you mentioned, with those buildings, able to just find those long range shots there. Uh, and yeah, great hold coming through from the Hornets. And now we want to see them pull that into their attack. What we see them playing now is a little questionable. We'll, we'll see if that actually happens. What I am interested in, though, is Tam Yu, Sigma Tracer. That's the exact same. Everything else is new, low sustain, but high damage output. But nothing's higher damage, though, than a single shot from Voidex, especially when you have Cherry in tow giving that 25% damage boost. We've seen him hit it once before. Can he manage to do it again? Any players up and peeking just hides around the corner. Woo! You're playing with fire, whether they knew it or not. Tam you can stay alive for now. Yeah, Vortex again now. <gasps> with that he has just <sighs> barely missing that shot on the Widowmaker. We'll now swap back over to this Sojourn Sacred and opting to still stick with this Soldier 76 here. A nice hit scan uh, character trying to just get some early damage that they are yeah. able to dump out here. And then that's pretty much the only change we see from uh, SU here. Everything else pretty much staying the same. Hey, Vortex hit the shot. We want to give him credit. It was a full head shot, yeah. but because the damage falls, those recent change, Widow was too powerful, so it didn't get the one tap kill. Now making this transition over Sojourn and Soldier 76 on the field. Consistent damage output, and it's going to put Just down on an Ash. Just can't quite pump out the same amount of shots in time. You corral the tank into a corner. Who else is left to provide a shield for the supports? Absolutely nobody. Been happy to do a little bit of punching in the small area. Shenandoah are making quick work of Objective A.
Yeah, Wanter there just being signaled, uh, singled out there by Ben. Both tanks really not uh, in really that fight at all, right? That was really just supports versus DPSs there. Uh, support DPSs versus support DPSs yep. there in that fight. <laughs> able to pick up the kill going in SU's way. The cap now already coming through plenty Ooh. of time. Your King Kong Poppy mm. again finding the Genji on that backside. Huge pickups coming across the board. Temu are doing what they should, and it's, it's adjusting your composition, and you're moving towards this dive. Yes, that can work, but you can't really be playing into the tank, and especially if you're losing your Genji to the Soldier and the Yardi on point. I mean, it's very difficult to coordinate these dives up top, and I mean, they're just buying so much time, just chilling in this room. Damn you, are deciding to poke in and out, but all the meanwhile, this payload's moving just in a moment. We're gonna see it round that corner, the Golden Box victory in sight. That's a Captive Sun onto the Doomfist. He's gonna explode into a pile of rubble. And now, Shenandoah, what is left to stop? They have three ultimates on the board, and Damn you are getting held at their very own gates. Gravitic Flux, just a bit of a victory dance for Ben, as they're gonna manage to walk it home for point number two, securing a Shenandoah for match point. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> that was not really even a close push there for SU there. They were really just kind of able to roll through that one. Props to King Kong Poppy, able to find those back line angles. And you can see Tamiya were trying to find this dive composition, but just unable to get onto the backside. I like the switches coming through, but they were just, just unable to execute it up against the momentum that SU were playing with you on that push. And, you know, this this is the what the team has been practicing for all season. Not a single face is unhappy right now. <laughs> no frowns in sight. They're all smiling. I mean, this, this is what they have been achieving. We all know what this team is capable of. It's unfortunate that they've been playing against these ridiculously high-skilled opponents that yeah. barely anyone has been able to take down. And, and now that they're here in the LCQ against new teams that haven't even had a glimpse of what Shenandoah is capable of, mm -hmm. to see them back on this normal track where they're just going and they're taking care of yeah. business, getting out and having fun all the meanwhile. Yeah, and... What commanding first two maps, right? Because they were able to have that very long hold there on Paradiso, able to deny entry again to that site. Sacred End and Voidex finding huge angles in these last fights, as well as King Kong Poppy in this most recent fight. Mm -hmm. We saw him along with Sacred End, along with Voidex, finding these angles, finding these DPS characters loop, falling early in uh, a lot of those fights. And that was really what separated them, right? They were mm -hmm. able to get that early pick, no one dying on the side of SU, and they were just able to keep that ball rolling, keep that momentum going. And, and props also to the supports, right? keeping everybody alive on the side of SU. Yeah, and especially in in this map, Shenandoah, they play to their strengths. I mean, Tam Hu opted to pick this game mode, anticipating that, oh, there's no way that they want to practice. Everyone loves Scrims Row, I mean, King's Row. And yeah. I mean, this has just got to be another one of those squads. Oh, you have not met the Hornet. They are a bunch of oddballs, but in the best ways possible. Their coach, Sacred End, knows exactly what teams like to play and what they don't. And you're accidentally putting Shenandoah on a territory they are completely familiar with. And it's going to be difficult to catch them off guard from this point forward forwards is the third map type that we head to. It's going to be Flashpoint. There's only two options, and it is by far Shenandoah's best game mode. Yeah, Flashpoint is something that I love to see, right? That's my personal favorite Flashpoint? game mode. Yeah. You know the map I like. I'm I hoping do. for a little bit of New Junk New City. Junk City. Yep. Yeah, yeah. New Junk okay. City is the one that I am looking for. <laughs> Could you remember for. the name of your favorite map? Yeah, I got to remember the name. I was like, Old Junk City? No, old I'm pretty, junk sure, city. It's pretty new sure it's New Junk City. I'm pretty sure it's new, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's new. It looks It looks yep. like an older map, that's for sure. But <laughs> it is brand new to... Uh, everyone right uh so mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm excited to see hopefully that is what we bring out but like we said that is some uh, a game mode that su is very comfortable on very uh confident to run a lot of different comps on this flashpoint uh and yeah interesting to see excited to see what they bring out and as they should be, Shenandoah, they're feeling it right now. They are absolutely over the moon. It's the closest they've been all season to getting that win. And all it's going to take is one more map to reach that point. And Flashpoint, you're going back to this more brawly favored area. You can choose to run the Ramatra Junker Queen. Typically is where we're going to see his teams go to. But with how strong Ramatra has been, we mm -hmm. may even see... Some of those change-ups, I can see the celebration coming out of our good friend Benjamin, New Junk City, yes! 
where we're going to be heading off to this evening, where Shenandoah feel confident they can close, or rather, let me rephrase it, where Tam Yu think they could take Shenandoah down. But let's be honest, neither of these flashpoints Shenandoah are really feeling scared of. Yeah, and you'd expect something like this Ramatra comp to come out against stuff like this Lucio is something that you often see on both sides on this flashpoint game mode because the movement and the speed that you have to have getting to these new points as they come up is really crucial and pivotal uh, to these two teams. You might even see something like the Symmetra come through, but not often something that you see because Lucio really gets the job done uh, for both mm -hmm. squads. Yeah, and the speed is the name of the game. It's essentially a massive glorified movement of rotations and ultimate economy management. And this is where Shenandoah can pull some of these big brain strats. And it, it's a lot easier when you're not forced to take on a lot of these massive, massive, be like these aim teams, right? Mm -hmm. That are reliant on taking these 1v1s or just completely outskilling them. Yeah. Shenandoah, they know their fundamentals. They like to out-team mm -hmm. their yeah. opponents instead of out-individual. And, mm -hmm. and that's where they can shine the brightest. A map like Flashpoint is only going to amplify that further. Yeah, and, and that's the thing about this SG squad, right? They are really good at playing as a team, right? Exactly. But individually, they are also very, very good at this game. So it's interesting to see kind of how they bounce back and forth between team play and letting someone, if they're really going crazy, being like, all right, we trust you to try to find this pick, try to find this angle to get this kill. Um, and, and yeah, but for... Uh, a game mode like Flashpoint, we often see that team mentality come through, and that is something that Shenandoah uh, excels at a lot uh, compared to some other teams. And especially when you're going to see our first point of arena, and that's kind of where the tempo is set. The objective is slightly lower than the mm -hmm. rest of the map. Like you're fighting outside of the ring, just ah, like a good story or so. But I'm not sure how that is in yeah. Overwatch. Yeah. Turns. We're, we're going to guess main story. Yeah, story. yeah, you can look around yeah. there. About one character height tall, uh, maybe like two tracers stacked together and one sigma. We'll go with that. Yeah, so. yeah that makes sense. Yeah, I think that sounds about fair. right. <laughs> yeah. So with this like kind of ring here. There, no one really fights on the inside, right? No, not really. Because that's kind of just like shooting fish in a barrel, right? You're sitting down there, yeah. and everyone looks down, and you're like, oh, that's a free kill, right? So no one really stays in the center. They just take that cap, and they play with these pillars and these walls on the outside of this map. Just like we thought would come out here, we have Lucio's on both sides, but we do have the JQ on the side of Tammy. Yeah. The only difference is the tanks, uh, Ben, on the Ramacha Wander, though, picking up the Junker Queen. So while you are going to have the additional speed and uh, this damage when you fight close up, Shenandoah have more sustainability and, uh, I guess, a solid pillar in your front line in comparison to a Junker Queen. She's still a very good hero to play against, but when you're at the mercy of this hive and essentially playing a game of cat and mouse around the arena, I don't even know where which team came from. We've, like, done at least two circles around the map. <laughs> I am convinced. And yeah, Shenandoah, yes, they are up temporarily. Now they're gonna have to regroup on the objective. It is unlocked. There's a few instances you will fight in the actual pit itself. Both teams looking for a knockout. Shenandoah specifically been bringing out the good old punching fist. Gets gonna be a loop on the top. And it'll be the Hornets for the first cap. Yeah, and those two supports falling early there for Tam Yu really opened the door okay. for SU to find these angles. Now we're gonna see the swap come through on the side of Tim Yu going towards this Doomfist, trying to find this backline access like they were trying to do uh, later uh, in map number <laughs> two here. Voidex, however, already able okay. to find the kill onto Luke. Huge early pickup in this exchange. Uh, you get the Sojourn down, you're significantly less damage. Just isn't even with the team right now. Recently swapping over to the Sombra, easily burned on through. The opening picks that Jen and Doe have been able to find, not even needing to coordinate together as a team. I mean, it's just Voidax popping off as an individual. There's another one in the kill feed, speaking of which, and he shall be mentioned and appear for a triple. My goodness! I mean, Voidax is just finding every angle farming. in this round uh, so far, in this first point. And there's nothing Tamu can really do. There's just so much pressure coming out from SU that they're not even able to approach this first point. The cap already coming through for the side of SU up 1-0 now on mm -hmm. this flash point. And now the rotations, we're going to have to see where this one goes. But All big Sacred End just getting aggressive on this back line. 
Uh, Shenandoah, you have two options. You can either take the fight or go to the next point. Most teams choose to go to the next point, uh, but at this point, all right, we're getting aggressive. We're getting a little punchy, and is Annihilation and Overclock spent there? And you're going to go ahead and reap the reward. Only thing is, Tammy will be back to contest as the next point appears to be Ducks, an indoor site that forces teams to either filter through these very narrow chokeways to fight close, or you can opt to fight or over at the range where your opponents have a significant high ground. Yeah, and with these ultimates being available kind of across the board for both sides almost, two down uh, for Tamu 2 as well on the side of Shenandoah here. But we also already see the ultimates getting spelled there Ooh. from Cherry, trying to get aggressive, trying to get these kills. The beat coming through as well. Just will go down to the Void X Fist loop as well, falling to Sacred End. Tamu trying to get these angles, but yeah. SU just playing it better. The Ducks, and the same thing as we'll see with Refinery, are two points that if you do not get to the objective first, you are in big trouble. I mean, Shenandoah, they have the setup, and they know exactly where Tam you are going to approach. While there's only four angles, they're, you're very loud. You're just kind of stomping around in there. The fact that you're winning this fight early, you're getting yourself up to essentially one fight territory, and Tam you are going to have to pull out some major stops in order to break through this line of defense. Yeah, they will have two ultimates to their name, zero on the side of SU, everything expended in that last exchange uh -oh. there. So if Loop is able to find some kills with this overclock, Cherry already finding one, Ben as well, <laughs> Loop already down four overclock, can even come out in Sacred End, wow. still staying alive, Ben will fall on the backside of this fight, but again, Sacred End just playing with his food right now. The Ramacha able to stay alive going <laughs> into that melee form oh, here, <laughs> but again, SU just playing so confidently. And now, not only are they up on map points, but they're also currently on match point, leading them up to winning this entire series with a single more flash point going to their name. And uh, honestly, that last fight, they should have lost. I mean, Wander being in a close space with that annihilation around everybody, that should have been absolutely devastating. But Shenandoah's ability to recognize that, do a full-on banana split, and attack from different angles, ended up saving them at the end of the day. Now they're gonna approach here on to Junkyard. This one, a much more open space, as you'll see, in comparison to the rest of Flashpoints on New Junk City. Damn you, will have the resources at their disposal to attempt to poke them out, and ideally it should be Loop starting out Overclock on the high ground. Are they gonna manage to find anything, though? Voidex recognizing the threat that this TPS player poses and not gonna peek much further out. Shenandoah, though, their health bars are low, not quite bends. He's gonna walk straight through the objective. Annihilation in hand. Yes, Voidex loses his 1v1 at the end of the day, but for the greater sacrifice, while Loop was occupied, Ben was there attached to these purple tendrils and just annihilating Tamu. Yeah, Ben staying confident, staying uh, aggressive here for the side of SU, able to pick up three with the ultimate and first capture, well, second capture rather, the recapture coming through <laughs> from SU on to this point, 29% on the side of Tamu. They had a good angle, a good fight, but like you said, they were just able to play this backline uh, fight just better than Tamu in this instance, right? They mm -hmm. have three abilities, or ultimates rather, up and available. We already see uh, Tamu opening up with ultimates of their own, able to find an early kill there onto Vortex, exactly what they wanted to see. And there's gonna be second one there on to Cherry. Only the Coalescence committed, so Tamu finally finding a way to break through where Shenandoah have been planted and standing strong and like get some percentage here on the flashpoint to kick us off. But for Shenandoah, that's a fight you're okay with losing. Look at yeah. the amount of check marks they still have. Yeah, and now they're just gonna be able to regroup, play slow, get what into that here? backside. They're just being patient. They're just waiting for their tank to catch up a little bit, right? Ben, 30% on this ultimate charge with King Kong, Poppy, Vortex, and Sacred End. Both DPSs having their ultimates up and available. Possibly able to find this back on the overclock will already come out. Ooh, overclock, but instant reaction from CC and King Kong, Poppy alike. Some barriers in place, and ooh, look how much Watcher's Annihilation is just shredding through that overhealth. Tam Yu almost looking like they could clean up this objective entirely. They got so aggressive there, and that's the difference we've seen from Tam Yu have just resulted, resorted to taking a beating, backing off, playing the slower game, allowing Shenandoah to get control. But now that Tam Yu realized, hey, why are we letting them walk all over us? Let's just walk into them, and it's given them their first flashpoint. Yeah, Tam Yu opting to contest that fight there, forcing SU to back off of the fight. And 
we saw a lot of abilities being used. The ultimates being used on the side of SU. The beat and uh, Voidex's overclock going down uh, for SU. Sacred End not opting to use that pulse bomb. Ooh. Now we'll use it instead onto the Ramacho. Will go down a huge pick onto the tank for SU. Yeah, best elimination you could ask for. No brute force standing in the way of Shenandoah's wrath. And Bomb Flats certainly off to a great start. No major resources even needed. It's just the team kill Bell to signal them on forwards. Yeah, a good play there from Sacred End. Able to find that Ramacha early on in that fight and then just playing uh, around this backside being able to melt down Loop's health bar as well as finding that Moira later on in the fight. Tamu now opting to just rotate Ooh. back, get this reset. King Kong Poppy will drop wow. forever. The Moira going crazy in this first fight. Ben trying to fight back. CC will drop on the point, but Ben doesn't have a lot of support left Ooh. remaining. Trying to stay alive, trying to get the kills, but Loop finding three Ooh. kills of their own, keeping Tamu alive. And Tamu certainly in desperation mode as they're going through. And it was a wonderful speed amp from CC to give Goliathans, uh, Coalescence, an even greater threat. I mean, put that with Wanters punching fists on the front line. I mean, Shenandoah eh, found themselves in a bit of a blender right there. It's okay for them to go ahead and regroup. You're going to have a Coalescence of your own to come into this. But of course, the big threat is Loop absolutely popped off in the previous battle. Is a big overcommitment though, just yes, well they will live. Much more vulnerable, especially. It's not gonna have that in the back pocket. Yet a beautiful stick onto the soldier to trade back and forth. Shenandoah is still very much into this battle. That's Loop falling suits. Cherry in the kill feed. Not once, but twice. This coalesce is absolutely massive. Helping guide the team through, and they're going to need it, particularly with Wanter walking around the objective. Next target just to fall as the Shenandoah cap has returned and looking to clean this up with one more fight. Yeah, one more fight remaining indeed here, but we see King Kong Poppy will have that beat up and available. No one else really will have their ultimate ability ready for this upcoming fight. Maybe CC the Lucio on the other side for Tamu, possibly being able to get their beat up and available, but probably not, right? It's at 84, 86% right now and ticking, Whoa. but Loop already down. Ben able to secure the kill. Oh, they're playing aggressive. They went on up. Tamu though, yes, they managed to sneak around the objective. They got the cap back over. It's not gonna last long at all though. Shenandoah already won the fight. And they're just about to win the war. Overtime Wick burning it down so close to the Hornets' first victory of the season. Only two players standing in their way. All of the health you could ask for for Tam Yu. Shenandoah's resources, though, they're wisely backing off, waiting for all of that overhealth to dissipate before they themselves make the move to strike back in. Sacred End and Avoid X, a tag team of devastating damage to push through. Tam Yu keeping the trades relatively even. And it's Void X and Ben to finally put them down the Bad nail in the coffin as the Hornets are going to take their first win of the season and continue their tournament ahead in the LCQ. A last uh, ditch effort there coming through from Tamu. A close, scrappy final fight as well. But SU playing patiently, knowing when to give some ground back, waiting for these cooldowns to come uh, back up, and then re engaging later on in this fight, able to secure the victory. Voidex, you can see him here in this final fight going crazy, able to secure the ki uh, the kills and mm -hmm. the win there for Shenandoah. And Voidex had one heck of a game throughout the day today. Not a single moment went by where we weren't even th just, we were always thinking about his name. And most yeah. of the time we were talking about it because he was in the <laughs> kill feed like three or four times per yep. fight, which is absolutely incredible for this squad. I mean, we know how hard that they have worked and, and the effort that they put into this season to see mm -hmm. them now finding that success for the first time and in the most desperate moment yep. as well is actually just such a great thing to see. Yeah, and, and props to everyone on this team, right? Tamu as well playing super, super well, keeping it close through every single map that we had. Uh, but SU able to get over that last hump, that last hurdle, those final fights, scrappy as they were, but SU were able to prevail. They are do very well in that kind of team play, that last minute kind of it's now or never kind of mm -hmm. scenarios, right? And they were able to prevail today. They, I believe they have one more uh, LCQ to yes. lock uh, mm -hmm. in. Uh, a playoff berth here uh, for the Hornets, but 
off to a very good start with a 3-0 here against Temu. Yeah, and you know, it's the one of two wins that they'll need to continue their life forwards into the playoffs. Historically, this team has made it into that top 16 within mm -hmm. the Star League competition, and if they're going to play next week like they did today, Ben, I mean, their ticket might as well already be booked. If I remember looking at the bracket correctly, the team that looked like they were favored to pull it out was the Michigan Tech Hus Huskies. Yeah. So, a very strong team, none the less. And one that the Hornets will certainly be preparing for moving forward, especially keeping an eye on where the competition will continue mm -hmm. to evolve. Brand new patch, new meta, but old faces, old heroes yep. to pull out and as the comfort and honestly one of the best situations that the Hornets could have asked for today. Yeah, and we knew all the scrappiness coming in the preparation for this match, right? The Malga was very popular and very good, and then it was gutted yeah. today, right? <laughs> right yep. before uh, the match here tonight, and they were able to adjust, able to go back onto this Ramash Cup, onto mm -hmm. this Sigma on Paradiso, and just really able to pull a rabbit out of a hat and play outstanding Overwatch yeah. today. It even talking a little bit with the coach before, I'm like, we just saw the patch come through. It happened to be in the same room, and he's like, <laughs> I, which, she's like, did you see the patch? She's like, yeah, I did. I'm like, how are we feeling? He's like, oh, we'll, we'll have to see. And yeah. uh, there, I never saw any sort of that hesitation. I yeah. mean, there was no doubt in their minds. And uh, to be honest, they had to be going into this matchup. To put it plain, plainly is either we get our first win today or our entire season ends. Like, those are your two options. One of those significantly better than the other and the one that they will manage to win the day out with. And thankfully for us, we're going to get a bit more of an insight on that ourselves. We're going to have Cherry join us up here on the desk for an interview. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. Shenandoah, yes, they are up temporarily. Now they're going to have to regroup on the objective. It is unlocked. There's a few instances you will fight in the actual pit itself. Well, team looking for a knockout. Shenandoah physically been bringing out the good old punching fist. It's going to be a loop on the top. And it'll be the Hornets, the first cast. Popping off as an individual. There's another one in the kill feed. Speaking of which, and he shall be mentioned at a peer for a triple. My goodness. I mean, SU up 1-0 now on this flashpoint, and now the rotations, we're going to have to see where this one goes, but oh, big Sacred End just getting aggressive on this back line. Uh, and Doa, you have two options. You can either take the fight or go to the next point. Most teams choose to go to the next point, uh, but at this point, all right, we're getting aggressive. We're getting a little punchy, and Annihilation and Overclaim, as we'll see with Refinery, are two points that if you do not get to the objective first, you are in big trouble. I mean, Shenandoah, they have the setup, and they know exactly where Tam you are going to approach. While there's only four angles, they're, you're very loud. You're just kind of stomping around. <laughs> SU just playing so confidently. And now, and not going to peek much further out. Shenandoah, though, their health bars are low. Not quite bends. He's going to walk straight through the objective. Annihilation in hand. Yes, Widex loses his 1v1 at the end of the day. But for the greater sacrifice, while Luke was occupied, Ben was there attached to these purple tendrils and just annihilated Tamu. Yeah, Ben. Staying. Just resorted, resorted to taking a beating, backing off, playing the slower game. Long Shenandoah could ask for no brute force standing in the way of Shenandoah's wrath. And Bomb Flats certainly off to a great start. No major resources even helping guide the team through when they're going to need it, particularly with Wanter walking around the objective. Next target just to fall as the Shenandoah cap has returned for, for Tam Yu. Shenandoah's resources, though, they're wisely backing off, waiting for all of that overhealth to dissipate before they themselves make the move to strike back in. Sacred End and Voidex, a tag team of devastating damage to push through. Tamu keeping the trades relatively even, and it's Voidex and Ben to finally put them down the bed. Nail in the corner. Playing patiently, knowing when to give some ground back, waiting for these cooldowns to come uh, back up, and then re-engaging later on in this fight, able to secure the victory. Voidex, you can see him here in this final fight. And welcome back to the Shenandoah Esports channel. Our Shenandoah Overwatch team just wrapped up their first LCQ game for their nice Star League competition. Ended up with their first win of the season. Oh, and it was a wonderful yeah. sight. I mean, we have Cherry with me here on the desk. I'm a big fan, by the way. I love thank the hair. You. I'm a gameplay. bigger fan of you. <laughs> so. oh, thank you so much. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about, about the game and kind of the, the season, the journey that you guys have taken to get to, to this point, right? Shenandoah had 
a bit of a rough start moving through the Super Conference. Of course, some incredible teams that you're going out against. But now, getting that first win on the books, keeping your season alive. Talk me through how that really was feeling. Like, what was going through the comms there after you guys secured that final map? Well, honestly, I think we were all, like, really happy and, like, positive, like, no tilting. Like, hey. we were just all joking okay. and having fun. I think it was really great, to be honest. And we didn't get to play Malga, so... <laughs> we didn't get to play Malga. Is that a good thing? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so we're, we're, we're yes. not Malga appreciators here. I mean, the, the comp is, like, kind of fun, but okay. I just get to play Moira and run around, <laughs> so, like... Obviously, I'm going to have That's fun. That's always but. a win, and you don't really have to aim much in Moira. It's yeah. kind of like, ooh, I'm going to hit left click, and exactly. I'm going to hit you looking in your general exactly. direction. <laughs> yep. I mean, hey, even when we did see you on the Baptiste, I remember one particular moment on Paradiso. Uh, just after the you guys were on defense, that first point was capped on that staircase. You put out the amplification matrix. Both Ben and I's original reaction were like, what the heck is going on here? But then we learned never doubt Shay, because she knows exactly <laughs> what she was doing. Now, I want to know, was that was that planned? Like, what was, what was the plan? There? It was like... I'm just gonna window this. Like, <laughs> I, I think I think this window will get some value in some sense. I'm okay. just gonna do it. I mean, most of the time that's what I end up doing because I play a lot of those kind of characters where it's like, you know, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna cold this. I'm just gonna window this. So okay. yeah. And especially being in that flex support position, that's a lot of what your job is, is yes. making these split, second, uh, these split second decisions that can either save your entire team's fight or sometimes right. destroy them. And yes. throughout the day today, you have saved them time and time again. The amount of value you're able to get out of an amp matrix or a coalescence, a, a glorified cooldown, as we call right. it. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's so <laughs> like actually it, generally impressive. And Thank it, you it's so great much. things that we've expected from you. You've been, this is your first time on the varsity Overwatch team. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. This year, I want talk me through kind of uh, what that transition's been like. You moved up from Academy, and now you're kind yes. of playing up here with Varsity. It was, it was hard at first because I have to fill a big person's, I mean, a little person's <laughs> shoes, but I have to fill Kasim's <laughs> shoes. Dang. So Call I, out. <laughs> so I, um, it was hard adjusting at first, but I feel like I've gotten it down. Um, unfortunately, we haven't won that much, but I've been proud of my performance overall. Okay. So. I mean, as you should be. You should yes. be proud of your performance. Shay, if you're Thank not you. proud of your performance, I will tell you. Be proud <laughs> of your performance. Thank and, you. Thank and you. And, of course, your run is not done just yes. yet. So you will yes. have another LCQ match to be played. We don't really know against who or when. Uh, even when yeah. that could be. So <laughs> while we're in the, uh, the details, of course, fair get out. I want to get your thoughts on that. Your next opponent coming up is either going to be Michigan Tech or another team that I forgot who they're playing because I'm like, Michigan Tech probably going to win this. I mean, what are some of those preparations going into into place for this game? Well, hopefully we can figure out when we're playing first and then calculate around that when we're going <laughs> to scrim and, yeah. you know, what comp we're definitely going to run. I think we're going to stick with the, with the ROM, but who knows? Who knows what we'll pull out? We'll have to sniff that out. Mm -hmm. You guys, unfortunately, have been very unlucky when it's come to these patches just hours oh my God. before oh, games. Game I mean, that face just says time. it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like you it's spend weeks doing the same thing and they're like, they patch it like, right? what are we supposed to do now, guys? Like <laughs> hours before our games. Like, uh -huh. it just, everything flips and it's like, basically our games are scrims. Like, we're like trying <laughs> these comps out for like the first time. Luckily, we had a scrim today. Yes. So that was good. That was, that was but great. I mean, hey, you tell them, Shay. You tell them. Make I'm sure they know. I'm telling them. I'm telling them. Of course. Okay, so and we got an idea of where you guys are moving forwards and, you know, your place on the team, the progression you guys have made. It's been it's been incredible to watch here on the desk, casting all of your games throughout the regular season. And, you know, I, I want you to have some time. You're usually back there. We're usually talking about you. But I want you to give time uh, to yourself to make any shout-outs, any mentions, any, any words that you have to say to the people. Okay. So okay. I'd like to give a shout out to my mom. I don't know if Our she's mom. watching, but I love you, mom. <laughs> and my dad, I don't know if he's watching, but I love you too. <laughs> You've pushed me so far to go in the direction that I wanted to, even though people told me I shouldn't, but look at me now. <laughs> so, um, and then I'd like to give a shout out to my boyfriend and my girlfriend. Hey, there you go. Love you guys. <laughs>
<laughs> Shout out to all the people that supported you on oh, the yes. way. You absolutely love to hear it. And, of course, your journey is not yet over. I'm sure you oh, have yes. to get back to your team. You guys got some stuff to oh, go yeah. ahead and we talk study. about. Oh, yeah. We got to <laughs> study. You got to get prepared. The grind never stops, people. But we also have to go ahead and end it for the broadcast tonight. I want to give a shout out to our Super Smash Brothers team who are playing right behind me in their own last chance qualifier match. They've been doing really well so far. Make sure to follow all of the Shenandoah University Esports Twitter and socials to stay caught up on those results. But for us here on the Shenandoah broadcast, that is going to be an end of it all. Make sure to tune back in for tomorrow. We got Valorant and Rocket League going on. So go ahead, have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you tomorrow evening. Meeting an unfortunate end as the very start of this beginning. I mean, Loop, that's two heads now rolling for the Hornets. Loop, who a menace in fight number one. Yeah. The amplification Matrix and the Photon Mary Jamie dumping everything on the board. Jury's going less. It's working absolute overtime. It's King Kong Poppy in the kill feed. Voidex to follow it up with a shot of his own. Shenandoah took the surprise attack like champs. Like, hey, this is nothing new for us. We invented this play, Tam Yu. They want to win. They're going to have to try something else. And a good response. Voidex is going to hit the deck first. King Kong Poppy's ultimate just a little bit too late to keep him on his feet. Shenandoah, though, the blizzard from Sacred End was perfectly placed. It put Tatanyu straight back in winter. Quite is the error to follow up. No red bodies on the point. Ben sure as heck knows it. I'll be shut Okay, yeah, so they're running the Malga. Malga notoriously is Ramatra's biggest counter. He is essentially useless when it comes to that. I mean, you're set on fire, you're doing crit damage through and through, but on he's there. Voidex is taking all of the supports out before Tamu can even poke their heads. Yet being down three of their team members, you're best off holding that for your next battle. Yeah. There's advantage if they know how to work down a player or two and it's gonna come back to save them in the best ways. Control Stutter is gonna hit up 100% and that's Shenandoah's second map win. Voidex able to find two huge picks with that ultimate coming through and really that's what swung the fight back into SU. So you see play of the game here, Ben able to pick up some Defensive game. Your amp matrix is up way sooner. So that threat of double damage, double healing, and even the tree of life put down on the objective. Overwhelming resources for right, You mentioned that beam fully being invested into Ben there, trying to keep him alive. And gonna then be the ones fighting into an amp matrix. Interesting spot for Cherry to put it, but okay, if it works, it works. Never doubt this back teeth player. She knows exactly what she is. He's just trying to keep them out of harm's way, trying to stay alive, getting this kill onto Ben here. Sacred and Voidex overclock now pop, but will go down, oh. unfortunately, to the opposing soldier. Yeah, just was sitting and waiting for that moment to come alive, and that's a couple players lifted up to the sky, smashed back to the present. Jendo now for Sacred End, that's a Pulse Bomb out through the back, and he's getting a loop. No reaction from either Azusa or another toe near the payload. It's going to stop midway through that second of now. Yeah, Vortex again, now drunk with that he has just <gasps> barely missed. Who else has left to provide a shield for the supports? Absolutely nobody. Ben happy to do a little bit of punching in a small area. Shenandoah making quick work of Objective A. Yeah, Wanter there just being signaled, uh, singled out there. Point number two, securing a Shenandoah for match point. Even a close push there for SU there. They were really just kind of able to roll through that one. Props to King Kong Hobby, able to find those back line angles and you can see Tamiya we're trying to find this dive composition but just unable to get onto the backside. I like the switches coming through but they were just just unable to execute it up against Convinced and yeah Shenandoah yes they are up temporarily now they're gonna have to regroup on the objective it is unlocked. There's a few instances you will fight in the actual pit itself. Well team looking for a knockout Sh Shenandoah specifically Ben bringing out the good old punching fist gets gonna be a loop on the top and it'll be the Hornets for the first cap. Off as an individual, there's another one in the kill feed. Speaking of which, and he shall be mentioned and appear for a triple. My goodness! I mean, SU up 1-0 now on mm -hmm. this flashpoint, and now the rotations. We're gonna have to see where this one goes. But oh, big sacred end. Just getting aggressive on this back line. Uh, Shenandoah, you have two options. You can either take the fight or go to the next point. Most teams choose to go to the next point, uh, but at this point, all right, we're getting aggressive. We're getting a little punchy. And Annihilation and Overclock, let's see, with Refinery are two points that 